we're gonna, we've got a new subject matter that we want to dive into on tonight. In light of recent events, things that are just going on and happening, not only in the body of Christ, but around the world, this subject matter of how do we deal with or how do we find comfort in a time of loss is, some, loss is something that we we just need to open up the discussion of. Most times this discussion is opened up during the funeral. But how many know that before and after is a discussion that just has to be had? Most people don't want to talk about death. They don't want to talk about loss. They don't want to talk about grieving and mourning and weeping. But the Bible has much to say. So the perspectives that I want us to gain, gather, acquire, and understand as we enter into this is what does God say about it? You know, for us being his word ministry, everything boils down to what does God say? Because at the end of the day, that's who you got to believe. Amen? That's who already knows where you are, what you're dealing with, and what you're going through or going to, and has already spoken concerning it. So as we spend a little time, and again, the class or the lessons uh, from here on out again it may awake emotions it may not prayerfully it gives clarity amen but again um, we understand that aspect too so several verses I want you to write these down because we didn't have time to print everything else so I want you to write these verses down I'm not going to hit all of these tonight the time will not permit I'm going to probably deal with one or two but these are some you can study till I get there amen all right, write this one down. Revelations 21, verse 4. Write down Psalms 147, verse 3. John 14, verse 1. Now I'll go over these again. Joshua 1 and 9. Romans 8 and 28. John 11, starting at 11. 1 Thessalonians 4, starting at verse 13. Psalms 34, verse 18. Isaiah 51, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 15, Verse 22, 54, saying 1 Corinthians 15, verses 54 through 58. And then, of course, Philippians 1, verses 21 to 24. Anybody who all needs me to repeat all these? Okay. All right, might not be the same order, but I'll repeat them. Revelation 21 and verse 4. Psalm 34, verse 18. Psalms 147, verse 3. John 14, verse 1. John 11, starting at 11. 1 Thessalonians 4, starting at 13. Matthew 5, verses 4, starting at verse 4. Romans 8, 21. Joshua 1, verse 9. Isaiah 51, verse 11, 1 Corinthians 15, beginning at verse 22. Well, uh, uh, I already said that one. And then also 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 58. And then we're going to look at Philippians 1, 21 through 24. Okay. Tonight, let's pick it up in Matthew I'm going to hit two verses, preferably. Matthew 5. Will be where we begin tonight. So again, in dealing with this subject matter, 
It's something we've all faced at some point in time. I seriously doubt that there's anybody in the room who has not experienced death in some form, be it past, present, or you will face. Amen? Uh, the extent and range of it we know goes to every gamut from friends to family to even strangers. Amen. Death is one of those issues that is just, it's just a, it's a part of life. Amen. It happens. There's a verse in scripture in Hebrews that tells us it's appointed unto man what? Once to die. And then there's a judgment. So reality is you hear most of this most times at funerals. It's not expanded upon as we're going to do. But it's coming to all of us. Amen. So the more prepared we are for it. And reality is. Uh, and I'll say this for me, being 40-something years in ministry, you don't ever get prepared. Amen. Every time, depending on the relationship, a lot of times your bond determines the depth. Okay? So how a stranger would affect you is different than how it is if it's a loved one or if it's a spouse. But nevertheless, death has an impact. Amen? So let's go to uh, Matthew 5. And let's pick it up in verse, I'll actually begin in one. Many of you know me, uh, Matthew 5 is the book of the Beatitudes. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth, and he taught them. The disciples, he said, these are some things I got to teach you. Watch this. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Mm. So there's a place in poverty that there's actually a blessing. But notice what it says, blessed are those who are what? Poor in spirit. Why? Because you should always have a capacity now to learn to know and to grow and to do more. That's your blessing. Now watch this. The blessing is to have the capacity. Some people don't have the capacity to grow. But if you have capacity to grow, then he says, I can teach you. Hmm. Make sense? All right. Blessed are they that what? For they shall be what? Now notice here, even as he gets to this first verse of mourning, he says it's a blessing to be able to mourn. Because now you will come to know what it is to be comforted. Ooh. Do I have to mourn to be comforted? Well, mourning in this particular tense and set of what he's saying is that you will never know what it is to have compassion until you need compassion. Always understand with Jesus, it's always ministry. Understand with Jesus, it's always bigger than you. Jesus. All right, go to 1 Corinthians. Let me show you something. Actually, it's 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, first chapter. I want to show you something. Got to see the correlation. So again, blessed are they that mourn because they're going to be what? So, what does that verse also speak to us and say? This ain't going to last all the way. This, this moment of what you're feeling, what you're enduring, what you go through, God says, I put an expiration on it. Your comfort is coming. So that means, watch this, understand, he's not ignorant to what happened. And he's not ignorant of what's needed. Is that making sense? So God knows where you are when these situations and times occur, but God is also knows what you need, okay? So that means he what? God's got you, okay? You're not in this alone. You're not in this by yourself. Look at 2 Corinthians 1, pick it up in verse 3. Look at the wording again. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of what? So if you're going to find comfort, if you're going to find relief, where are you going to have to find it? It's going to be hard to get outside of God. 
Hmm? Because some things we go through in life, some losses we experience in life, God is the only somebody that can take the pain away. God is the only somebody that can give you peace in the middle of it. He's the only one that can give you strength because of it. So your total dependence, even in a situation or circumstance, you got to look to who? Scripture says, looking unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. So look at this. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Look at four. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Why? Okay, that goes right back to what I just said in Matthew 5. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So this thing is really bigger than you. God says, I'm not going to let you die in it. I'm not going to let you die even going through the process of it. Because out of this, I'm going to get what? Ministry. Go a little deeper. This won't be the first time, and it certainly won't be the... But what's going to happen is, you're going to be able to help somebody else who goes through. Because you have been helped. So blessed be the God of our Lord, of God, Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of our comfort, who comforted us in our tribulation. So you should expect comfort. Now I'm going to throw points out as I go. You got to expect comfort. Okay? And I'm, I'm going to get ahead of myself. But there's a healthy morning, but there's an unhealthy morning. There's a healthy way to grieve, and then there's an unhealthy way to grieve. Okay? There's an expectation you got to have, and the scripture says God's going to be the one that's going to give you the comfort. Okay? Who comforted us in all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort, by the comfort, wherewith we ourselves are comforted by who? So you got to tell yourself, you got to wake up every day through these things in these times. God, you got me. God, you got me in this. I am not alone. Well, we love that verse. We just don't deal with it a whole lot. He said he would never leave us forsaken. So why should this situation cause God to run? Well, it won't cause God to run because God says, I saw it before you did. Right. But even though I saw it and whether I changed it or didn't change it, I still put comfort in place for you so you could what? Go through this. Yeah. All right. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by who? By Christ. Now here, when you get to this place here, by Christ, is by the anointing. God says, my anointing is what's going to break this. My anointing is what's going to release you out of this. So you got to learn how to stay in the presence of God through this. Amen? All right. So back to Matthew 5. So again, Matthew 5, the Beatitudes. He says again, blessed are they that what? Mourn, for they shall be comforted. Okay? You got to get this. God's going to comfort you. God's going to help you. God's going to give you what you need in this season. And remembering it's only a season. Okay? You're going to come through this. Okay? Now, go to 1 Thessalonians. <coughs> Michael, tell me that heat down. I'm, I'm hitting 145 and I ain't got started. <laughs> That's either the heat or, or me for real. <laughs> All right. It is. It's a little early. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, All right. So let's go to 1 Thessalonians. And let's pick it up in verse 13. Give me a reader. I need somebody to read it. You need to read it. If it ain't that one, it's the one downstairs. Yeah. First, Thessalon uh, First Thessalonians 4. Verse 13. I do not want you to be ignorant, brothers, 
troubling, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Okay. Now, when we look at these two particular passages, there's a lot to learn. First thing is what is found in the first phrase. What does it say? But I do not want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant of this. In essence, here again, the attitude. Here's a place of teaching. Here's something you need to study. Here's something you got to understand. Bible said wisdom is the principal thing, but in all you're getting, get what? You've got to get an understanding. you got to get an understanding of where God is when it comes to death and loss. we got to understand where God's position is when it comes to mourning and grief. you got to understand. So he says here, brethren, I don't want you to be what? And ignorance simply means what? Unlearned. Now, here's a place we are right now. Most people, even in the body of Christ, are ignorant or unlearned when it comes to this. How do we know that? Because of the way we handle it. Okay? You heard me say on many occasions, if you've ever been with me through a funeral, we do this backwards. We do it backwards. We go to the hospital, the baby is born, and we're excited. We are rejoicing. We got a baby shower going on and everything. Huh? Scripture said that's backwards. We really should be crying because the baby is now coming into what we already looking at and saying, oh my God. And then that's why, again, help you with some things through, that's why we call it a celebration of life. We turn the table. <laughs> Because scripture says, don't be ignorant. Here's the place you rejoice. But society teaches you not to rejoice. Society doesn't teach you to rejoice. Society teaches you to crawl under a rock. Society teaches you to go within and hide at the back. That's not what God said. Okay, uh, oh, I'm all over the place. Go to Revelation 21 right quick. Somebody read that. Revelation 21, verse 4. Four. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. That's the revelation. The revelation is what? We ain't gonna sorrow about this. Because again, coming right back to where we started, who got this? You gotta get it in your spirit. God got this. If God got this, he got me in this. <laughs> Come on, y'all. He got me. Okay? So again, back to what the verse says. I'm back in 1 Thessalonians 4. Brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them which are what? What's the terminology? Asleep. Not death. Asleep. Scripture doesn't use the term there, death. It uses the term asleep. So, what does being asleep imply? Come on, y'all. Come on. Don't make it hard. Bro. Let me get through this one quick tonight. Look what he said. Here's what I want you to be ignorant of. They are asleep. Now, y'all, many of us went to sleep last night. But what happened this morning? Come on, catch it. Catch it. If they're asleep, they're going to be awakened. Right. So it's not really death as you suppose. It's actually sleep. 
Remember when we're taking communion and we're doing the cup? He said, for this cause many among you are sick, weeping, and even sleep. Because to God is just sleep. And sleep implies a reawakening. So what you got to understand, it's only a sleep and it's a transition to another level. Okay? And we can get into that page. I don't want to get into it tonight, but we'll get into where each part goes. But here's what Paul says, and I do just a little bit. Paul says to be absent from the body is to be what? So if you're absent from your body and the body has gone to sleep, where is the real person? So are they really dead? Come on, y'all. It's, it's the revelation. You're going to have to get it if you're going to get past it. You follow me? Okay. So, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them which are asleep, that ye what? You see, here's the part. Here's where that teaching part is. You've got to understand the difference between being asleep and death. And now he says, don't what? Don't sorrow. See, I told you, we're doing it what? Backwards. Backwards. Now, okay, so what is the definition of sorrow? It means deep distress, sadness, or regret because of or especially for the loss of someone or something you love. That's the definition. Now watch this. This is what God said, don't do. You, you working with me? This is what God says, don't do. Don't what? Don't get in deep distress. Don't be sad. Don't regret that they have transitioned. Don't be unhappy or live in an unpleasant state. Don't be in a display of grief or sadness. See, I know it would get a little quiet right through here. But if we're going to believe the scriptures, what does the scripture say? Now, Jesus said, if you love me, then what? Well, the commandment of God is that you what? God says, don't let what has happened alter your state of being. I told you we had it backwards. Everybody can't handle this, but I'm going to tell you what's in the book. You already remember the book when you get to it. Don't be mad at me, man. Get with the book. God says, I don't want you ignorant of what's going on because this was not supposed to cause you deep sorrow and sadness. Mm. Brother, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning them which are asleep. That ye sorrow not as them that have no, here's our next word to look at, no hope. You have no expectation or anticipation or you are lacking the understanding that you won't, you thinking you won't see them again when in God you will see them again. And because you know you will see them again, and because you have understanding of knowing now how this thing, how the breakaway happens. The body, that's when we're doing the funeral, ashes and ashes, dust and dust. The body goes back to where it was formed from. But the true entity, which is spirit, has to go back to him that is a spirit. For God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him how? In spirit and in truth. Now, without this truth, you're going to be ignorant of how you're really supposed to handle the situation. Ooh. My, 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 my. So that you sorrow not as those which have no what? Now, 14 tells us why you may not have hope. It's a question of your what? Your faith and your belief. Watch what he says. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which are also asleep in Jesus, will God bring what? 
So where are they? Now, watch this, y'all. Come on, come on. Let me get a little, let me get a little plane, a little street with us for a minute. What? Why are you mad when because they with him? Aren't we all trying to get with him? Huh? Truth and reality is they just beat you there. I, I know, I know it messes with some of us because. At my age, I should have been there. We always think it should have been the older ones that make it. We think it should be us. But God says, I choose who I will. The news to you is, they with me. You should rejoice because I got them. I don't need you to be ignorant of this. Because as long as you stay ignorant of the facts, you're going to handle the circumstance and situation incorrectly. Mm. Now watch this. Look what he says again in 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if Jesus died and, and, and got up, how come they came? Come on, y'all. Where you? What you believe in? Now, if you believe that, then that's your assurance. That what? We don't see him again. You just beat me in. Okay? Look what he goes on to say. Even so also them which are asleep in Jesus will God what? Amen. Bring with him. For this I say unto you by the word of the Lord, that ye which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are what? You're still being here. Ain't changing nothing about the fact that they coming back with me when I come. And, and whether we know it or not, I mean, for long, we don't know. We don't know who next to join. The question is, are we going to start getting excited when others make it in? Now, can we go a little deeper tonight? We really should be pushing for one another to get in. If I do my job correctly, if you do your part correctly, then we all should be striving to make it easy. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the goal? But it's like the saying goes, everybody talking about heaven ain't ready to go. But it really don't matter whether you're ready to go. He said, I go and I prepare a place for you that where I am, you're going to be also. So in essence, some are so busy waiting on the resurrection, as the, I mean, waiting on the rapture, that you don't understand. It ain't got to be when everybody get caught up. Some folk just going to get up out of here before you. And God says, again, I don't need you to be ignorant to this. I need you to understand what's happening. I need you to understand, I don't need you to sorrow. I don't need you in deep distress and sadness. I don't need you unhappy in an unpleasant place. Because guess what? You still need to give me praise right through here. Ooh, Lord. You still need to rejoice. You still need to be excited. You still need to be. When you really need to be sad is when the baby born. That's right. That's what he's saying. Because that baby's got to go through and learn and deal with. And in our day and time, there's a whole lot to deal with now that we didn't deal with 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Amen. Amen. But blessed are they that mourn and have this understanding because you know God's going to comfort you through. Now again, he's not saying that you shouldn't miss. He's not saying that you shouldn't feel. He's saying understand what I'm doing. Understand. He said, for if we say unto you by the will of the Lord that they which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ are going to what? 
But then he goes on to say, but what's going to happen in the end? We all going to be together. We all going to be together. We all going to be together. So again, if we digress for a minute, it ain't the end. It's just simply understanding what it is to transition. What it is, you may have you ever been in school and some people were younger than you, smarter than you, and graduated before you? Hmm? What happened? We call them special. Well, some folks special enough to beat us. It's perception, it's mindset, it's how you look at it. But again, don't discount script. Script said, don't be ignorant to this. Don't be without understanding in this season and time of what I'm doing and not only how I'm doing. Go to John 11. You also got to understand, y'all. You got to get this. We can't do it the way the world do it. And it be okay. All right? Watch this, John 11. Let me pick it up. Uh, I'll preface it. It's the story of when Lazarus died. But I want you to show, me, show you what Jesus said and what he did. Look at verse 11. He says, verse, well, let me pick it up at 9. It says, Jesus asks, are there not only 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbling because there's no what? Did you catch that? The light is the revelation you got. You can walk through a dark place as long as you got the word on it. You can go through a situation. And God said, the word is like a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God said, when you got understanding and revelation, you can walk through this and not stumble. Always understand the enemy will use an occasion like this to make you stumble. Right. But God says, when you got the word, when you got the light, it doesn't matter. Check this, check this. It doesn't matter how dark it is. The darkness is not going to trip you. The darkness is not going to capture you. So in essence, he, this is why he said, don't be sad, don't be sorrowful. Don't be unhappy and unpleasant. Get an understanding. Because you got to be able to walk through this. Right. But what's going to help you walk through it is the word. Right. That's why I don't want you ignorant. I want you to know. I want you to have some light on so that you can deal with this. Look what he goes on to say. 11. These things said he after he saith unto them, our friend Lazarus, Now, this is what Jesus said, which, again, brings us back to where we are even with teaching. There are some things we need to say to you after somebody goes to sleep so you don't be ignorant, so you don't miss, so you don't misconstrue. He said this after Lazarus, the Bible said, went to sleep. Mm, you see in that? You see the terminology of sleep? These things said he after he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may what? <laughs> God says, now listen, if they go to sleep in me, I can wake them up. <laughs> Come on, y'all, you got to find the comfort in this. God says, I got this. If they go to sleep, I have the power to raise them up. Catch it, y'all, catch it. Then said his disciples, Lord, if ye sleep, he shall do well. How be it Jesus spake of his death? See, they didn't understand. Jesus said, no, he's really dead. But to me, because I have the power to awaken him, it's just sleep. They just at rest. They have, watch this here, when you go to rest, you cease from your labor. In essence, God says, I put them on vacation. 
Work is over. Toil is over. Trying to make it happen is over with. You ain't got to do that no more. Why? I put them to sleep. Come on, y'all. Catch it. Catch it. Look what he said. Then said Jesus under the plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sake. Watch this now. Y'all got to catch this tonight. Y'all got to catch this. Here's what Jesus said. And I'm glad for your sake I wasn't there. Y'all, can y'all handle this tonight? I got a, check, got a test your spirit in the house. So I'm going to go over it. God said, I purposely didn't show up. I purposely didn't stop it. I didn't counteract it. Are you reading? Um, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to it. I told you on many occasions, God will do things for his own glory. Work with me. God allowed him to die to make believers out of them. I keep telling you, salvation is in the death, not in the birth. None of us got saved till Jesus died. Did nothing change till Jesus died. Some things don't change. It never would have happened had they stayed alive. You in the book, right? You follow me. Hmm? I'm giving you what's in the book. Jesus said, I purposely didn't show up. Not because I couldn't have been there, but I'm going to get a greater weight of glory out of this. I'm going to expand the kingdom. Because of this. You want you right, read, you read? And I'm glad for your sake. Who was this done for? <laughs> okay, okay, let's say it another way. Who benefits from this? He said, it's your benefit. Don't miss this. It's your benefit. He said, I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow, uh, fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Come on, y'all. You know Thomas was the doubt now. He ain't understanding either. <laughs> he ain't understanding. He said, well, let us go die too. Well, we all got to die at some point in time, but I got to die on his timetable, not mine. Right, right, right. Okay? He, he, he ain't got the revelation. Let's, let's read on. Let us also go that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Four days. Already. Now, Bethany was now unto Jerusalem about 15 <laughs> furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Mm. Pay attention. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Mary and Martha, y'all know the story. One's outspoken, and one knows what it is to be quiet. Because see, sometimes, in situations like this, you can say the wrong thing and stop the move of God. Watch this. Jesus just told the disciples, I purposely didn't go. Right. 
Because there's some folk don't believe I am who I say I am. And watch this. And Lazarus, he called friend. But I'm going to let my friend do this so I can make a believer out of some folks. Mainly, Martha. Because Martha is ignorant of who I am. Martha is ignorant of my power and my ability. So watch this. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, this wouldn't have even happened. God, where were you? God, why were you? Where you didn't, why you didn't stop this? Why you let this happen? These are things we come, that come out of our mouth. These are the questions we put. But that's what I've told you recently. Be careful what's coming out your mouth. There is a move of God. Don't stop it. In death, there's always a move of God. There's always some God doing greater than us. Hmm? Watch this. Watch this. Martha said unto him, I know. Well, no, let's back up. He says, 22, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, thy brother will rise again. Why are you tripping? Why are you tripping? You tripping. And it ain't the LMA type trip either. <laughs> Y'all know I wasn't gonna let the night pass. You know I had to get some stuff in there now. Trip, trip. Hey, glory. Let me leave that alone. All right. Gotta stick with the Bible. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, that brother shall rise again. But Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Martha, you ignorant. Because you done put me in a distant future when I'm right here in front of you. The move is right here in front of you. The blessing is right in your face. But you somewhere way down the road. You're showing your lack of anything. But where is Mary? Still, still in the house. Woo! Catch that whole that phrase. She's still in the house. Mm. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection, I'm the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, catch that. What's happening? He's still living. Death don't stop the living. Come on, put it together, y'all. Because to be absent from the body is to be present where? Which means what? Still alive. He's still alive. What you're missing is the body. But the essence that made the body or the spirit that made the body is yet alive. You can't kill a spirit. Watch this, 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me, look at that phrase. Then what he said? That's the hundred thousand dollars. But do you believe it? Here's the problem. What you believe. Here's the problem. What you're saying. Here's the problem. Your doubt and unbelief or your ignorance to truth and fact is about to prevent one of the most major moves of God that can ever take place in that individual's life or in that family's life. Woo! Look what he goes on to say. 27. She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come unto, into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, the master is come and calleth for thee. Mm. Now, isn't it amazing? God wasn't looking for the one that met him. God was looking for the one that was in the house. Right. Now watch this. Let me help you with this. Jesus is on his way to perform the miracle. Martha done stopped him. 
Martha then held him up from his mission to raise him up. And Jesus said, where your sister? <laughs> you ever had somebody just come, just tap your time, and you just, okay, I really didn't come see you, no way. And, and, and be honest with you, and this is the reason why I didn't come to see you. Because you don't know how to talk to me. You talk like a foolish woman. You talk like somebody ignorant, unlearned, and has no clue. Where your sister? I want to talk to your sister. I want to talk to somebody who's, watch this, watch this, patient right now. I want to talk to somebody who's at peace. I want to talk to somebody who knows that I am who I say I am. I want to talk to somebody that believes me and whose actions are demonstrating they believe. Because what is she doing? She waiting on me. You couldn't wait till I got there. And then you approach me wrong. You approach me with blame. Didn't trust me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to direct you through this. But see, Martha, you ain't waiting on me. You ain't waiting on my leading. <laughs> but do you catch this? Jesus said this was done so I could make believers out of some folk. Believest thou this? Do you have the revelation? Do you have the understanding? Because watch this. Your attitude will reflect what you believe. Mm -hmm. Your attitude in this thing is going to reflect whether or not you believe I can do this. Dig a little bit deeper. We're almost out there. And as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now, Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. I told you she stopped him. Where was Jesus? Jesus said, I ain't going no further till somebody that believes me welcomes me into it. Come on, y'all. Don't make me get happy tonight. Did you catch that? You catch that? Let me talk to you. She said, he said, I'm not going to go any further than this doubt and unbelief. Go get me somebody that's got some faith. If you want me to proceed any further, if you want me to bring to your house what I was in destiny to bring you, I need somebody <coughs> with some faith. Right. <coughs> Martha's approach stopped the move of God. Martha's attitude held up Jesus from moving. Is no different than when Miriam held up the camp for Israel because they questioned who Moses married. And the Bible said he put leprosy on her and set her outside the camp, and the camp could not move for seven days because God said, I've got to judge this. Moses, you praying and you asking me to let her go, but if she had did it to the governor of the state, she'd be in jail right now. And so Moses, I hear you when you pray. Moses, you my man. But guess what? I'm finna deal with your sister. Y'all right, right. ain't catching this. I see. Be careful of family folks who don't. Don't let family talk you out. Oh, baby, you need to feel like this. You, listen, listen, I got the book. I'm in the book. I'm going to stick with God. I ain't finna have no morning party. All y'all professional mourners want to come over here and make me cry. That devil is alive. You don't get up out of here. Don't make my gangster come out because I will slap you. I'm trying to stay saved as I possibly can, but you better get on up out of here. Because I feel something coming on. Mm, and I ain't had nothing to drink neither. I just feel something. Y'all <laughs> huh? know how we have to do our folks now. Because they're professional. Huh? Just come in. Jesus many times had to put out professional mourners because they came in to see how loud they could 
get the house. Baby, this ain't no party. I'm going to tear the roof off. Not right here. You better come in here worshiping. You better come in here on your face and praising God. You better come in here with an expectation of the move of God. But you're trying to see how long I can cry, and then we're going to have a crying contest. And how many snot tissues we got on the ground and all this. Get up out of here. And then on top of that, you're trying to take a plate home. You got to watch them. I done seen them take whole cakes out. I done seen them take whole drinks out. I thought you was crying, but you weren't crying that much. You got that case of coke going around your door. Anyway, let me quit. <laughs> now, Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but it was in the place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth into the grave to weep there. See, I told you them professional mourners was in the house. They said, Oh, she's going to the grave to weep. No, ain't nobody going to the grave to weep. We're going to the grave to see what God get ready to do. We're going to see the move of God. But you see, see what the expectation was? She going to weep. See, be mindful of those that want to keep you in grief. Yeah? Don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with facing it. Ain't nothing wrong with sitting it. I believe that. But I ain't coming to stay. I'm not finna pitch a tent right here. Watch this now. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Now note the difference in how she said it and how Martha said it. One was received and acceptable, the other one wasn't. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And then, watch this, even Jesus wept. Even Jesus wept. He said, because that was my friend. And true to fact, I could have been here. But it was needful and necessary that you learn who I am. It was needful and necessary that you gain a different understanding. And the Bible said, even Jesus wept. See, you got we, we, we quote that as the shortest version of the Bible, but you don't understand the background. Right, right, right. But Jesus was not only crying because his friend died, he was crying, he said, because my people are so ignorant. Right. My people don't know who I am. Right. My people are following me, but don't know me. They say they love me, but they don't trust me. They say I got this, but yet they trying to handle me. Then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused even this man uh, should not have died? Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, coming to the grave, it was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he's thinking. Martha always got the wrong answer. <laughs> Martha, you worried about how he smelled. Huh? You, you, you're too deep, Martha. You're too deep. You're too spiritually deep. Watch what he said. He said, take away the stone. When Martha said, he dead. He's been dead now four days. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe it, thou should see what? What's the whole objective? I got to see the glory of God. God, this thing has happened. This thing has occurred. But show me your glory now. Show me your glory. Show me what you going to do with this. Show me how you're going to move in this. Show me how you're going to handle this. You working with me? Amen. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hearest me or hast heard me, and I know that thou hast hearest me always, but because of the people. Look what he says. 
Don't miss this. 42. And I know that thou always hears me always. But because of the people. Because of the people that's what? Standing by looking. See, watch this. Be mindful of them that look for you to crumble. There's some folks look for you to fall. There's some folks looking for you to quit. No, baby, dress up, put your best on, say, here I am, here I stand. Huh? Do you know how many people I had? I know I talk mainly about my own experience. Do you know how many people I had tell me they thought I was through when Pat Taylor died? And for a minute I was. I ain't gonna tell no lie. But after I found out what they were saying, I said, oh hell to the dog, no. <laughs> hmm? I ain't going out like this. Y'all be all right, don't we? Y'all stay safe, stay safe. Huh? Huh? Y'all know I come with it raw as can be. I ain't got time to be playing with folks. Listen, I ain't going out like this. How you want me to look? How you think I'm supposed to look? <laughs> oh, you counting me out. Oh, I got you now. So really, when you should have been praying for me, oh, you... You the one. Uh -huh, I got a mark on you now. You the one. I knew somebody had a dagger thrown. Oh, you the one. Oh, you didn't want me to bounce back. You thought I wasn't coming back. But baby, here I am. Hmm? No. Because of what? The revelation and understanding. There's glory after this. Woo! There's power from God after this. There's increase and overflow after this. This ain't the end. Why? Because we know where they are. We know where they are. We know they're in his presence. Look what the scripture goes on to say. Lord, I thank thee that thou hears me. And I knew that thou hears me always because of the people which stand by. I said it that they may believe that thou sent me. Who was this for? This is for the people. Who did God do this for? God did this for the people. God says, oh, watch this. God says, I'm all over this. But do you see me? I'm all in this. But do you see me? Can you hear me now? Can you feel me now? Do you understand? Don't be ignorant. Don't sorrow as them that have no hope. Because if you die in me, you'll see him again. So don't give up hope. Don't lose hope. Stay in faith. Stay on the path. Keep trusting God. But don't be ignorant.